Okay, welcome everyone to the virtual competitive algebra seminar. Uh, we are very happy to have Professor Winfried Bruns from University of Osnabrück. He will speak on Castello Mumford regularity over general base rings. So I invite uh, Professor Bruns to present his talk. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much for this invitation, for this opportunity to speak about this topic. Um, so custom over month of, over regularity over general base rings. So this is joint work with Aldo Conca and Matteo Varbaro. And so it's a, based on a, on a note that we wrote. And uh, this note is a, say, a compressed version of a chapter eight in our forthcoming book, which is called Gruppner Basis determinants and cohomology and it's the co-authors are Aldo and Matteo and also Claudio Raiku. Um, yeah, so so the, the of course the, the, the talk is a compressed version of the note and the note is a compressed version of the of the book. So I cannot perhaps say every any everything we, we which is in the book. But let me just say that of course many of these things I'm talking about uh, have appeared in the literature or maybe or everything, I'm not absolutely sure. And um, But I think it's scattered over many papers and what we try is to give a, say, compact, transparent treatment of this um, material. The, you, can of course, you can ask why does one do this? It's One reason is that there are situations in which you really want to have such something like custom over Mumford regularity over a base ring, which is not a field. Um, we will see uh, an opportunity later to apply it. Okay, so this custom over Mumford regularity was introduced by Mumford for coherent sheaves over projective space and then transferred to modules over standard graded algebras by Eisenbart and Goto and also by Oishi in the early 80s. And uh, since then, it has been really an important invariant discussed in many contexts and, and uh, investigated a lot. Okay, so the, usually the, the standard classical case is that the base ring over which everything is defined is a field. And we want to replace it by an arbitrary commutative Noetherian ring. Okay, so what's the setting? So R, capital R is our base standard ring. It's graded over the natural numbers. And the zeros component is just commutative in Noetherian and not necessarily a field anymore. Okay, we assume that R is standard graded. This will not be weakened. Standard graded means this graded ring R is generated over its base ring R0 by degree 1 elements. Okay, so this makes it standard graded. And as a useful additional object, we also consider a polynomial ring over R0 with indeterminates corresponding to our algebra generators, lowercase x1 to xn, and they are called so uppercase x bound to xn here, the indeterminates. And it's clear that this natural uh, uh, homomorphism sending the indeterminate to the corresponding generator. And of course, the determinants get degree one. And so R is an S module or S algebra, and uh, all R modules are S modules simultaneously via R. Okay, so this I think is nothing, there's nothing special to say at this point. Uh, just, uh, I think we all know about, know the setup. Okay, now let's introduce the, the regularity. Uh, we, t we take a finitely generated graded R module. Now it may have negative degrees. Uh, so it's only graded over the integers, but it's finitely generated. And the regularity, of M is now defined in terms of local cohomology modules with support in this idea generated by the degree one elements, which we call QR. Um, 
of course, in the in the classical case, this is a maximal ideal. Now it is often, if if R is not a field, then it's no longer a maximal ideal. Okay, but nevertheless, many things uh, trans can be transferred. So the transferred. So these modules are the, the uh, local cohomology modules uh, are z graded. Uh, more naturally, so to say, and they also vanish in high degrees. Uh, so therefore, one can, of course, dis dis look at the highest degree where such a module does not vanish, which we, which we uh, yeah, define as a regularity, uh, is uh, just the, the maximum. We take, we go over the, the non-vanishing components, and we add together the homological degree i and the, say, graded degree j, the arithmetical degree j. And we take the maximum of all these numbers. Okay, so then, of course, we can also, as we said, we can consider this module as an S module via our uh, map we have defined. And we can of look, also look at local cohomology modules supported in the corresponding ideal of the polynomial ring, QS generated by the indeterminates and uh, but the this does not change the local cohomology and so it that really doesn't matter whether we define this regularity over r or over s okay so so far so good and uh, let me let us look at some basic observations well if you shift the module m shifted minus a which increases the regularity by A simply because the generators of M or whatever, all these indeterminates are go in the positive direction. Uh, the polynomial ring has regularity zero uh, because the, um, uh, just because first of all, the local cohomology vanishes for I different from N for homological degree different from N and the 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 highest local cohomology is well, is well known. It is lit, sort of starts in degree N here uh, because we have this monomial in front and simply sim, uh, so degree minus N and we add N so we end up in zero. Okay, so for short exact sequences you can apply the long exact. Uh, sequence in, in cohomology and then you can derive some uh, some rules how these regularities uh, are related which is other which is uh, with each other maybe I need not read all of them to you you can see them here and uh, even later on have an opportunity to apply them yeah now there now comes a critical point um, what is a minimal set of generators in the say, classical situation where, uh, I mean, in Jürgen and my book on Macaulay rings, we would call it uh, uh, star local. In the star local situation, uh, minimal sets of generators are, are not uniquely determined, but their number, their, their cardinalities are uh, uniquely determined. And of course, they are minimal with respect to inclusion. Now here, we can only require minimal with respect to inclusion, which means that the number can vary, is not fixed by M. And there may be no canonical choice for, uh, for a minimal set of generators, in general, does not exist. So the number is not uniquely determined, but the set of degrees is. And this is, of course, important for us. Uh, if we take m modulo this uh, qr times m and then of course we get something which lives only in finitely many degrees and these degrees only depend on um, on m and they these, these i in which which m mod qr of m is non zero they give us the set of degrees uh, in a minimal set of generators <laughs> Okay, so um, this being said, it's clear. Yeah, sorry. My promoting man, tell him that. This being said, it's clear that we can take 
the maximum of all these degrees and which we call T0 of M. Now T here comes of course from tau. So we look at tau zero of M uh, with values in R zero, which we identify with R mod QR. And so the we look at the degrees which are in tau zero and of course we take the maximum of these. Okay, so I think nothing special so far. Good. Uh, yeah. The f really important fact, and uh, which you can find in the paper by Oishi and, and certainly in, in other work later on, um, is that this T0 of M, the maximum degree of a minimal generator, is bounded by the regularity. So this is the basic equation which, uh, or inequality, which somehow then influences the rest of the development. And if one wants to prove this, one can assume that R0 is local with maximal ideal uh, frac uh, M and uh, fi an infinite residue class field. All these are standard uh, transformations. I mean, especially this field extension, which we need to, to get for some, some general position arguments. And if M is equal to it's zeros local cohomology, then there's nothing to prove. Then we have equality here and uh, obviously by definition. Otherwise, we take this module M prime, which is the quotient by the zeros local cohomology. Okay, and now you can apply, find some uh, easy inequalities. Uh, T zero of the, of course, of the local cohomology is for sure, less than or equal to the regularity of M. Regularity of M prime is less than or equal to the regularity of M. And the T0 of M is a maximum of these two Z0s and so on. And if you take all this together, then you can really assume that M is equal to M prime to prove our inequality. Yeah. And now, uh, since the zeros local cohomology vanishes for M prime, one has that QR contains the degree one non-zero divisor X of M. Of course, for this assertion, one needs this infinite uh, residue field. Otherwise, it may you can find counterexamples. And now all this, now we have this standard exact sequence where we compare M and uh, the quotient by X times M. X is our non-zero divisor. And so, and we have the shift here, and you, if you put everything together, we see that the regularity of M prime is at most the regularity of M. And since the mini, the maximum degree of a minimal generator has not changed, as long as we, we, we divide out only elements from, uh, from QR here, uh, then we are done by induction. So that's just the uh, induction on the cool dimension, if you want, or something else. So. This is the basic inequality which we will need. Okay, good. Now, uh, one of the important aspects of regularity is that it comes it also uh, can be measured uh, by free resolutions or determines somehow the, the complexity of free resolution. That's of course important application. And when we talk about free resolutions, then costal homology also comes into play. Okay, so we, the first thing we do is give a variant here of this regularity in terms of costal homology. So we call it reg1 for the moment. And uh, again, we look at non-vanishing components, but now we instead of adding i, we subtract it from j. So we, we take the i, we go into homological degree i and uh, arithmetical degree j, and then takes the difference j minus i. Okay, so and this is also well defined, uh, good so far. And then we now give two more variants in terms of minimal free resolutions over s. So this is now something important. I mean, for the costal homology, it does not play a role whether we take R or M, but for the free resolutions, we must say we take them over S, our polynomial ring over R0. 
And what does minimal graded minimal graded is clear, but what does minimal mean? Or we say it here. So it always means that F i plus one is mapped to a minimal system of generators of this uh, the kernel from F i to F i minus one. The, the, uh, I's, or, uh, the syzygy module that comes up there, and that gives us a minimum. And it is clear that since minimal systems of generators are not uh, unique in number or whatever, we cannot exp these free resolutions are even more not non unique. And so it is. Uh, nevertheless, we can define something like regularity for f at least. It's not clear that this is an variant of M, but we can define it for F. And so the first is with what we call Reg 2. Uh, we take, we only look at the range from M, from, from 0 to the N minus the grade. So the grade is just the length of the longest uh, regular sequence in, in QS or QR with respect to M. And uh, so we only look at these modules, take the, for each fi, we take the, the maximum uh, of a degree of a basis element and subtract i. And then we can also do it for the whole resolution. And then we call this rec 3. Okay. And uh, a priori, it's not clear that rec 2 and rec 3 depend only on m. Uh, let me say that in the classical case, uh, Maybe I say this on the next. No, I don't say this. Uh, in the classical case, uh, various equalities here are immediate. Uh, first of all, you know, if if S is a polynomial over a field, this is just gives just the projective dimension of M. Okay, so by Hilbert Syzygy theorem, and since the projective the free minimal free result is no longer, these two are equal automatically is nothing to discuss um, we do not lose anything if we stop our consideration here after this we have only zero in the uh, the zero module in the free resolution if you want to look at it as an infinite resolution and also the 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 the, the equality is because the cost uh, homology is clear since we can compute the graded Betty numbers from the cost homology or from the free resolution and they give us the same. So reg 2, reg 1 equal reg 2, reg equal reg 3 is clear in the classical case. It is not clear here. Nevertheless, it holds. Okay, so and this is some of the main theorem. Uh, for every minimal graded free S resolution, one has that this reg of M equals reg 1 of M, which has nothing to do with, with F, but we use it in the proof. Uh, equals regular what we call reg 2 of f and also equals reg 3 of f so and of course one proves this as a in by a chain of inequalities and the most complicated inequality is the first that the regularity of m is at most the regularity reg 1 of m so i skip this here and the other things are not so complicated uh, the first inequality reg 1 is at most reg 2 well if you look at the, uh, I only write Q, Q for QR here. So if you look at the the costal homology, then it, of course it is this tau one, uh, tau i, ice costal homology, and it's the ice homology of F, of f tensor R zero. So far so good, and this means that this module here is a sub quotient of uh, this tensor product. Uh, yeah, it's not equal as in the would be equal in the classical case, but not necessarily here. It's a sub quotient, and therefore you can, of course, compute the 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 uh, maximum degrees. So uh, the maximum degree of a non-vanishing component here is smaller than the maximum here. So we have this inequality that is uh, the most t zero and f i, and um, if you go far back, say N O G, I think is a grade. I forgot to define it. I think is a grade here. If you go back uh, after the grade, then the costal homology is zero, and therefore it's clear that this reg one is at most reg two. Okay, so far so good. 
And now for Rack 2, uh, is at most Rack 3, this is trivial because we have the extended the, the range where we measure the degrees. Uh, and so you only have to show that Rack 3 is at most Rack M. And um, it's an inductive proof. So if you want, uh, you look at these standard exact sequence uh, related to. Uh, Excuse me, uh, there is a question from Satya Mandal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm getting, sorry, I'm getting lost with notation. What is yeah. this F? You know, is it a resolution? What is F? Capital F? Uh, this this F here up here? Yeah, yeah Math BB F. Well, this is the minimal free resolution. Minimal okay. free resolution of M. and, of and M, yes. Yeah, as an F module. And okay. M is a graded module. To start M is a graded M. module, you're right. Okay. O over the, um, the polynomial ring. Over the polynomial ring. I mean, yeah, or over, this doesn't matter. We can say over the polynomial ring, yes. Yeah. And. Uh, the um, this is the ice module, ice free yeah. module in F. Okay. I, so I get, I get this now, and yeah, I will just um, insert a comment since I'm talking. You know, um, uh, mom, um, this Mumford regularity was used by in Swan's paper on on K theory of uh, quadric hyperspaces. Okay. Oh, very well possible, yes, yeah. very well possible. I, it's an important paper, and I feel a lot of people miss that, you know, and, and yeah, so I just wanted to point that out, okay? And so okay, we keep it in mind, okay, and look up Swan. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank okay, you for so and, and now, of course, you somehow have this, this uh, maybe I do not read all the, all the lines to you, so you just look at the standard exact sequence connected with the syzygy modules with Fi in the middle, and um, minimality means that t at least implies that T0 of Fi is equal to T0 of Mi, uh, and it's, of course, lesser equal to the regularity, uh, which we know, uh, yes, which we know this. He knows this, yes. And of course, sure, this was Oishi's inequality. And then you put everything together and, and some kind of telescope trick, and then you get at least that the, the third regularity is bounded above by what we define to be the regularity. So this now no need anymore to distinguish these different notions and this is of course an important uh, um, step if we want to prove something about uh, maybe this is our main goal to prove something about free resolutions uh, we can of course then compute regularity the way we want to do it, want to compute it okay good so one more so let me just mention some further developments. So Mark, I think, is in the audience, and he has discussed several aspects and uh, in his paper, in his papers, in several papers. Maybe all I all I'm saying today is contained in this paper somewhere. And he's also introduced another variant, which perhaps, if we want to put it our uh, hierarchy, we could call it Reg 4. It involves all minimal free resolutions, or all free resolutions. I'm not sure in this moment, I must say. And again, one get, doesn't get something new from this. Okay, so the, the basic equation that the regularity is this, in terms of local cohomology is the same as regularity in, 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 um, in costal homology. Mark attributes this to uh, Jean-Pierre Joan Olu, and uh, I, I have a paper in the references here, the paper in which, uh, to which this refers. And of, I mean, in this, Joan Olu proved it in this generality even more. You can even do it over non material rings if you want. Okay, so let me mention just a little example which shows that the comparison of cost homology and minimal free resolutions is not so straightforward anymore. And uh, so there can be things which do not don't have in the classical case. Let's even take, so we don't have a field anymore in R0 here, but it is a local ring. 
So that's really the next best case after the field. And so over this, in this case, minimal Fourier resolutions are uniquely determined up to graded isomorphism. Okay, so this ambiguity problem does not come up if R0 is a local ring. Um, so you can say R now is a, it takes a polynomial ring in one variable over R0 and uh, we get to take one module which we call capital N, which is just R mod T. So if you want our field K and uh, take a module which we shift N uh, by two and take the direct sum with R mod X. Okay, and so as I said, everything is unique in the minimal free resolution. But if you look at the um, the degrees that come up, then you see T0 F1 is equal to two, but the T1 of M, which comes from the costal homology, the first costal homology, the same as the first costal homology of R mod X, and this is one. And of course, you can easily understand what's going on here, because this module, which comes from R0, is just extended to R, uh, can sort of, does not show up in the costal homology, not in the lowest costal homology, in, in, in the H0, but not in the higher one. And so therefore, you can, we could also take here 1000 if you want, minus one, then we would have 1000 here. And um, so, but to really get rid of this completely seems to be difficult. Okay, good. So this is just a little excursion, example. Yeah. One of the applications that we would like to uh, want, want uh, to look at are standard bigraded algebras. Okay, so um, again, we have uh, now the, the, the basic grading monoid is n square. So we have two, two degrees i and j, and the zeros, absolutely zeros component is. Again, a commutative Noetherian ring are generated by generators which we call X. They have degree one zero, and generators Y they have degree zero one. Okay, and now of course to apply our notions in, in a reasonable way, we must first or we, we need a standard grading, and of course there are various ways to make this. Uh, uh, a standard graded ring. So, of course, the lowest, least important is maybe to take the total degree in all variables. So, therefore, it's not highlighted in any way and we don't discuss it anymore. But we have two more important ones. We can take the, what we call the 1 0 grading, in which the, uh, the sort of the zeros uh, component is generated over R0 0 by the axis. Okay. And you can also take the 0, 1 grading, where we do the same thing, but with the y's. So that gives us two new rings. And we can now look at R as a graded ring over a z-graded ring or n-graded ring over R star 0 or over R 0 star, just taking the grading in the other component. Okay, so. Now any for you can apply this of course to every Z2 graded R module in the same way. So you can make it one zero graded or zero one graded or if you want totally graded. And uh, now we have of course various regularities. You can take regularities with respect to the first grading, regularity with respect to the second grading, and um, we can if we look at the module then. Of course, we made some notation for the graded components. So M star J is the, uh, uh, so we fix J, but we uh, let V run. So the first, the, the degree in the axis, so to say, the first degree is running here, and we take this direct sum, and the same you can do in the other way. So you split this, module in the same way as we have split it our algebra. And so they, we have this correspondence. So M star J is a finitely graded module over R star zero and so on. And 
of course, in both cases, m is the direct sum over all j, uh, of whether we take m star j or m i star, no, it's i here, not j, uh, gives us again m back. So it's just, if you want, if you write this as a great horizontal and, and a vertical, so either we take horizontal modules or vertical modules. And you can decide yourself what you want to take horizontal and what to take vertical. Okay, good. And so one thing which is now, I don't discuss the proof here, but which is now easy after all these preparations with the free resolutions. So there are various ways to uh, uh, get to interpret these regularities we have. So we can reg, say reg one zero of M and correspondingly also the other one, either we can say, okay, we take the maximum of the regularities of the M star J as a possibility. So sort of the graded components here, or we take the maximum over again something like highest degree of VI. Highest degree is a maximal minimal generator. Highest degree of a minimal generator of FI degree V comma star. So star is running here, and you can also do it the other way around, and so um, you get hold of a good interpretation, say, and you don't have to prove anything now here. Uh, you need no new whatever apparatus to define this or to prove it. It just come falls out if you write down all, everything from the uh, from our theorem. Okay, so this somehow allows us to discuss this bi-graded situation. Now, one application, linear powers. Uh, so we say that an ideal has linear powers if the regularity of its power, or it's generated in fixed degree D, otherwise it doesn't make any sense, in fixed degree D. And we say that I has linear powers if the regularity of the ith, uh, the least power is D times V. D is versus this degree, V is the exponent. And that for all V. Of course, this means that if you, you see this easily, it means that all the minimal free resolutions have maps of in which the entries have degree one, therefore linear. Maybe I should have said this here, but of course there's not, uh, not so much space. Okay, so this means all powers have linear resolutions, if I may say so, briefly. And the question is how we can uh, characterize this in terms of the Ries algebra. This is interesting if you can get hold of the Ries algebra. In our book, we discuss this situation, and I cannot discuss it here in detail, where maybe you can easily prove something about the Ries algebra, and then you get a consequence for all the powers of our ideal I. Uh, okay, so the Ries algebra is just what it is always is, the direct sum over the, the power with, with, with the grading in determinity to the V here. And uh, clearly the, the, the Ries algebra has a, has a um, Z graded structure. Okay, and uh, the generators, uh, um, Maybe I should say TF under TFG here is better. So they have degree zero one here. And uh, if we look at the V's component and we allow the, the first degree to run, then we get just the V's power, but it is shifted by VD. Okay, so this must be taken into account. So we somehow subtract. Um, VD from the true degree, so to say, the original degree. And so the theorem implies immediately what we can say about this uh, uh, one zero regularity. Just to write it out here. So the one zero relative is the maximum of over the regularity of the um, um, of, of these components, okay, where we let V run. And 
we know what it is, we can we get the regularity of IV and have subtract have to subtract the minus VD which comes from from the shift here. Okay, so we can immediately say what what linear powers means. Uh, first of all, we have this uh, not only linear powers. We have this inequality here. So the regularity of IV uh, is at most d plus the regularity the one zero regularity of the uh, this algebra. And equality holds for at least one v. Of course, maybe we don't know which v, but it holds for at least one v. And I has linear powers if and only if the one zero regularity of the Ruiz algebra is zero. And uh, one can generalize this in various directions. For example, you can also take all regular uh, products i to the v times a module. So whether you can take it relative to a module, or you can also look at families of ideals where you take powers, products of powers, and then you get uh, general uh, generalizations of this theorem. Okay, so this is a little application. So now, of course, what we also want to uh, get is this uh, theorem of, of um, uh, Kutkowski, Herzog, and uh, Jung, or independently theorem of Kodiyalam on, on regularity of powers. And then we need a little, little different setting. We have to look at uh, non-standard non bike ratings. Okay, so uh, we take now our A0 is actually the degree zero, zero component of our uh, algebra, just to leave no doubt about this. I simply, for simplicity, I just write A0. And now the, the two graded structure is given completely by these indeterminates. And we say, so the degree of yj is just dj, which is uh, some number here, and one. Okay, so second, second degree component is one. Uh, but the first is, some arbitrary at the moment dj, which is uh, non-negative. Okay, so as I said, a0 lives in degree 0, 0. And now we can study uh, if we have a z2 graded module, we can look at the highest uh, degree in which it is non-zero. Uh, if we say fix the second component and let the first component run here. So, and this is well defined just by the fact that we always have uh, um, uh, the way the, the degrees of the DJs are set up. And we would like somehow to understand how these uh, degrees, the highest non vanishing degree, how it, how it sort of behaves with respect to uh, if we let V uh, vary. Okay, good. So, and then the main theorem is that this is eventually a linear function with leading coefficients in one of these, given by one of the di's. And of course, it could be minus infinity if the module is zero. This is the, say, in the basis for, for this uh, theorem on the... Uh, regularity of powers may be also used in, could be used in other contexts perhaps. And uh, it is not so hard to prove uh, if one does it in the, say, in a clever way. Uh, first of all, you should note that you can filter the module and you only have to look at the quotients in the filtration and then take the maximum. Or you can, uh, this is the first lemma, not hard to show, of course. So, uh, yeah, only if you want interested in some kind of Hilbert function, it, it is additive along uh, such filtrations. Uh, and the next thing, which is also not so hard to see, is that you can, if you have a graded module, a bi-graded free module, we have a bi-graded sub-module, we can take a term order on our free module, and then 
we can really compute our row function in terms of the initial submodule. So this means if you take both things together, so the second lemma brings us really into a monomial situation. Okay. And the first, and now in the monomial situation, we can filter the module by, by, by uh, take a prime filtration, so to say. And the monomial prime ideals, which we have to look at, they are generated by subsets of the yj and the prime ideal of our base ring, which does not uh, come into play for the degree. And then, of course, it's just a common, nothing, not really difficult to see that the theorem holds. So first, we, we uh, go to a monomial situation by, by this lemma, and the first lemma then brings us into this, uh, after taking a prime filtration, into, um, into the, to look, we have to look at these things here to prove it for these things and uh, of course not for, not to forget any sh shifts that come in because it's so shifted versions of these residue class rings. Okay, so that gives us the fact that this row n, row n is eventually a linear function in B. Okay, now Regularity of powers of ideals, so we are more or less done. Uh, so I already said it uh, can be found in the work of Kutkowski, Herzog, and Jung, and also in the work of Cordiana. Again, we are in this situation with a standard graded situation here, so I want to, uh, so we are back sort of the original setting, but of course, R0 is now allowed to be a general base ring, no, not necessarily a field. I think in this regularity, this was proved by Jung and the co -author. I'm not absolutely sure at this moment. Uh, so we take a homogeneous ideal, generate the homogeneous elements of, now our di's show up, d1 to dg, okay? And then the theorem is that there exists a delta, which is one of these dg's, and uh, uh, integer such that the regularity of the uh, v's, v's power is just delta times v plus c and for sufficiently large uh, v. And this can be generalized to, again, for to, uh, regularity of i to the v times the module, so we alert everything relative to a module. You can also look at the regularity of a product of powers of the family ideals times a module. In the latter case, uh, this is not necessarily linear in the in the exponents anymore, but one must take the maximum of uh, linear functions. Yeah, and the proof, which we have prepared already, it follows these ideas of Kutkowski, Herzog, and Jung, but uh, the, the proof generalizes somewhat and also simplifies it. Now what the simplification was already in the last theorem on, on, on the slide back. Uh, no, what where uh, and say the, somehow this proof is a little simplification of what they have done. Okay. Yeah. And so let's just look at this uh, the proof is on one page now. So we take our polynomial ring by one to yg and we map it to the research bar. Okay. And uh, yi goes to the fit, this element is the risk algebra, which has to be dj, di1. Okay, so, and of course, this is the polynomial ring is z2 graded. Uh, if we just extend the, the, the r degree by, by giving t the degree 0, 1. And so R to the risk algebra is a graded subalgebra of the polynomial ring. And now uh, we take this bigraded map, map from the polynomial ring into uh, the risk algebra. And of course, we give, I think this should be just deg y j, I think, yeah. Oh, sorry, deg y j, yes, the t is superfluous. Deg y j is dj1. And then, of course, we can compute as we know, the regularity from costal homology. And uh, the costal homology of, of the Swiss algebra is just a direct sum of the costal homologies of the, of the, 
powers of i uh, and so on and of course this is the point is that this thing is annihilated this cost rule homology by uh, qr which is r times r1 and so now we can identify r mod qr with r zero and we are sort of in a situation where over r zero where r zero of course is living in the zero and so and the upshot is if we take our uh, of this discussion is that the uh, cost rule homology is a bigraded module over this ring r zero polynomial over r zero and uh, this module if you look at the iv is graded component of n it's just the uh, ice cost rule homology of the z power of v and now if you look at what we have proved over our row then you see immediately that the regularity of i to the v is just this row n i star of v and we know it is a linear function of course we have to look at several cost rule homologies and so on and but the, in one variable the maximum of uh, of linear functions is a linear function from for in high enough uh, values of the argument okay so that's just the whole proof of the um, theorem here so so that this is a linear function and uh, maybe that's all i want to say uh, there are some references here of course i'm mentioning our own work but also see uh, papers by others. Tim Römer also has worked on this. Uh, this thing with the, this theorem with the um, linear powers is at least partly in, in one direction. I'm not sure anymore in which one, which direction in, in, in Tim's work. Uh, we have then proved the other direction, Aldo, uh, Matteo and I in this, in this paper here. Uh, and, uh, Chardin, Mark's work is here mentioned. This is one paper of Mark, which has many results also in this direction. Uh, this is the paper which I mentioned, which has Juan Olu as a co-author. Papers by Kutkowski and Cody Yalam. And uh, this paper by, by I don't mean we, we look at the thing in uh, for, for power product, products of uh, powers of a in a family of ideals. So just let me just and of course you can find many more um, references if you start from these papers, and you will also find many more references in well first in this note which is in the archive, and secondly of course maybe maybe even more in the book, which I hope will be more or less finished by the end of this year. Okay, so it's not so thin it's about 500 pages and as i said this regularity stuff is one of the chapters in the book and it has of course examples and discusses things in more um, little slower and and uh, i know that there are so many indices involved and one can easily get lost in them um, nevertheless i think you should be able to if you want to, to learn this a little bit you can use this, this, this presentation as a first guide if you want and uh, also then enrich the material by, by examples from our book uh, as I hope, uh, as I said, I hope we'll be finished uh, this year. There's only some revision to be done on the last three chapters and otherwise it's quite complete already. Okay, so thank you. So it will it appear, if I may say this, finally in the mass monographs in mathematics published by Springer. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, so, well, we welcome any questions. Uh, what is this here? Where am I here? I must find you can, my, you can stop sharing. Yeah, I can, but I must first have this window with the presentation, right? Yeah, Where is it? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, ah, I hear it is just in the background. That's all. Okay, good. I have it. So the present, I, I take away this presentation. I said, yes, stop, stop it. And now I have many pictures here. 
Yeah. For example, I can see Mark and uh, okay. uh, yeah, and several other colleagues. I'm not sure whether Aldo has listened. Yeah, Aldo had a meeting with the rector, but uh, ah, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, 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 but but uh, yeah. Of course, I mean, he, his, his term is over uh, at the end of October, okay? Right. I think he's extremely sorry for this, not being the director right. of the institute anymore, but what can we do? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, any questions? You, you can open your audio and video and uh, ask questions. Of course, Maybe one at a time. Yes, Professor Watanabe, yes. Uh, your microphone is off. Can you put it on? <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much for the nice lecture. Yeah. Uh, nice to see you. Ah, Keiji, hi. Uh, hi. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Yes, Mark. Yeah, so yeah, maybe just two remarks. I have plenty of remarks. Maybe two. The first is about uh, what uh, Joanneau did. So the, the goal of Joanneau was to treat and all of this works if you have a model that need not be finally generated. Okay, and then you have exactly the same thing. I mean, so you, the only thing you have to replace is you take the the infimum of a minimum of a free resolution of these shapes, mm -hmm. okay? And then you have the same thing. So everything goes to non finitely generated. And this was the point of Joanne Wu, and that's what is in the notes, okay? Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. and, uh, and out of that, you, you also did use, for instance, easily some other consequences, like some of, of ones you showed. Uh, maybe another remark is that the, um, that, uh, well, our paper with Bagheri and Ha, our goal was to do that for, um, I mean, a couple of ideals, I mean, this kind of uh, results for regularity, so you can put several ideals, but also uh, somehow arbitrary gradings, okay? Of course, if you speak of arbitrary gradings, what we do is we look at the support of some Tor modules or support of causal modules, okay? But then you can apply that, I mean, to usual regularity, and you find what uh, Winfred said, or you can apply that to, I don't know, the, the different kinds of multi-graded regularities or this kind of thing, and this also works. Okay, Okay. good. Uh, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? So, uh, uh, hello, Professor Bruns. I'm Trevedi here. Yeah, yeah, I, I see yes. that at least you are... You're, uh, I can hear you. Yeah, I don't have video on my desktop. So yeah. I have some small question. Uh, you are taking a standard grading over uh, R0. Yes. Where R0 is not a field anymore. Uh, it's not a field, so, that's right. Yes. Yeah. So suppose if I take a spectrum of R0, R0, uh, and take a fiber over that, uh, then how does Castelnau Mumford regularity? behaves is it uh... so for fiber you mean you take you take a prime yeah. ideal and take the residue class yes, yes. right okay. are there I... only finitely many possibilities in that case so i'm i'm not absolutely sure one would have to look at it, it i mean the the, the uh how does this? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't want to say too much, so I'm not sure. Okay, I mean localization is of course not so difficult, uh, but then you, if you mod out this prime ideal, what happens then? I'm uh, sorry. I mean, I think one should be able to find out, but I cannot answer the question right away. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe I'm, someone else can. I don't know. I mean, uh, say something in this uh, situation. Mark your uh, mark your are, muted. Uh, muted. You can open your audio. Yeah, I wanted to say. I mean, when you specialize, okay, the regularity can go up and it can go down. So it's yeah. there's no 
Yeah. If you have some flatness, it should go up. Yeah. But, but without any hypothesis, it can go up, it can go down. Yeah, this is but also uh, my feeling. Are there only finitely many possibilities? Well, yeah. If the if the spectrum of your ring is Noetherian, then you can stratify. But uh, because I think you have only finitely many strata. That should be not too hard to prove. But uh, because you can relate this with a Hilbert polynomial, and Hilbert polynomials tend to have stratification. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, you have yeah. as well, you have the same, yeah. Well, you have the same uh, initial ideal, say. And and then if you have the same initial ideal, then you are possibly continuous. And then you... Okay, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, Satya, you had a question? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I have a very basic question, actually. You know, I, uh, uh, you know, you started with, the definition of castle novel uh, regularity and then interpreted it in commutative algebra and went in one direction i'm still looking at quillen's paper and swan's paper okay from k theory point of view okay so anyway there is a definition of castle novel regularity now uh, so you somehow interpret that for graded modules and and you have a new definition Okay, so my main question is, what is the relationship? I mean, suppose you start with a graded module, yeah, okay, and uh, you have your definition, and then you look at the corresponding um, uh, coherence, yeah, okay, and so whether um, there is any relation, um, see, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. sure. One paper um, does consider regularity over a ring i mean with base ring in, in r okay he, he does that and uh, so you know i mean if you are a commutative algebraist and if you want to do some k theory this relationship can be very useful okay i mean um, yeah i mean that's my general question thank you yeah no i i think i'm not so i think the just the index shifts by one or so uh, if you relate it to the sheaf uh, and I think it's, it's basically the same. I mean, um, maybe Mark can uh, answer this question right away, and yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, except that, like in the projective case, I mean, you have to neglect the finite part. I mean, the, the yeah. zero, zero for cohomology, but yeah. it's not reflected in the sheaf part. Yes, yes, yes. Unless yes. you you can also add variables and look at sheaf of a bigger projective space, but this is cheating. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you start from commutative algebra, you can make it, I mean, you can make the object, uh, geometric object, that yeah. really fits your thing. But if you start from geometry, then, I mean, the, there is not okay. a one correspondence between the graded uh, models and coherent sheaves. Yeah, yeah of course, you cannot get everything yeah. anymore. Well, yeah. if you take, for instance, you start by a sheaf and you take the sheaf of sections. Or, I mean, you take the sum of all the sections. Okay? And then the regularity is exactly the same as the, the one of the co oh, yeah. thing for coherent sheaf, unless you have points. Then you have to be careful. Because then you are you're not finitely generated. You can define regularity, but then you find... Uh, I mean, if you take the coherent sheaf for just I mean, uh, one point, I mean, the, the structure sheaf of a point, the regularity is zero. Mm -hmm. So... So, so you are essentially saying they are equivalent. I mean, um, with some. Yeah, they essentially. Yeah, they are. Yeah. 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 If you take the dictionary, and um, you're a bit careful in the case of points, then it's really equivalent. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll. I mean, you can can uh, relate this local cohomology and sheaf cohomology. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sir Gordon uh, principle, so to say, yeah. and, and therefore. Yes. Comes okay. up. Okay, I, I, yeah, I, I see that. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Sorry. The, the regularity of powers, uh, that's a linear function. Uh, what exactly do we know about the coefficients delta and c? Yeah, delta is one of these degrees, you know. 
this one can say. Maybe one cannot predict exactly which it is, but it is one of these degrees. And uh, the C is largely unknown, I think. This is, there are results in low dimension. I, I cannot recall them exactly, but in principle, it is, I would say, unknown what this is. Hmm. Well, yeah. So things are known. I mean, if you're in the same degree, it's known what is C. Yeah, in the, if, if the DI have the same degree. Yeah. 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 In general, I think it's difficult. In general, it's more complicated. In general, there is not, I mean. Yeah. I mean, I mean this shift. Algebraically, you know what it is, but uh, you have no geometric interpretation. <laughs> difficult to control the shifts, I think, that come in, and they, they of course, they determine the C at the end. So. Um, so the, the delta has an interpretation, which was given by Codillard. Yes. The, okay. One possibility is I have not mentioned this to, to uh, analyze this in in terms of reductions. Yes. As which we, you will find this in the book, but I did not mention it today. And so it's uh, also this principle can be also be used in the general case uh, to to define it in terms of reductions or describe it in terms of uh, of reductions. Yes. Yeah. You mean you mean the delta can be interpreted in terms of minimal reductions of i? The delta, yeah, yeah the delta. Yeah. Okay. The delta. Yes. Yeah, it's the, I mean it's the the smallest integral, so that if you keep things only up to the degree delta, yeah. then you get a reduction. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, I, I don't see further questions. So uh, let us again uh, thank uh, Professor Bruns for his very interesting talk. And we look forward to his book uh, to read this in more detail. Uh, thank, thank you very much. And uh, we meet next Friday by a lecture by Prashant Sridhar. Thank you very much. <laughs>